Vercel just came out with an AI SDK. It allows you to build an AI chatbot powered by OpenAI. This is an example. Hello, are you working? See what it says. And as you can see, it responds just like OpenAI's chat GPT would. In this video, we're going to follow the getting started documentation together to create our own chat GPT clone app using Next.js. You can also use Svelte if you'd like. I'm going to use Next.js. I'll put the link to this documentation in the description below. Once you're in your directory, if you have pnpm set up on your computer, you can use this command. I'm going to use npx instead and say create next app. And I'll make sure to put at latest just to make sure it's the latest version. And I'll name this my next AI app. Next, you can cd into your app name, npm install the AI package and the open AI dash edge package. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and say code dot to open this up in Visual Studio. In the root of your file, you can create a dot env dot local file. Within that file, copy this open AI API key. And here you need to put in the value of your open AI key. If you don't have one already, you'll need to go to platform.openai.com. Click on your name after you've created an account. Go to view API keys. You can click create new server key to get the key and then paste that key right here. Next, within the app directory, it says to create an API completion route. So you can come back to your app, open up the app file, create an API folder. Within that folder, create a completion folder. Within that completion folder, create a route.ts folder. You can come down here and just copy this code, paste that in the route.ts file, just to show you what's going on in here. This configuration and OpenAI API from OpenAI Edge will configure your app properly. This will be edge friendly, so it should work well all around the world. Next, you can come down here, copy this client side component in your app slash page file. Delete all the code in that file and replace it with this code. And now we should be able to say npm run dev to see this in action. So let's see how it works. All right. So here it is. Let's see if it works. Are you working? And it looks like it is. Now, the reason it responded with this weird response is if you come back to the route in their example, they have this uh, create three slogans for a business prompt pre built into this. You could instead delete all of that and just for the value put prompt and then it will get the prompt from the rec.json let's refresh the page and see how that works are you working and it said not at the moment for some reason why are you not working i have no idea why it's like being funny right now i'm currently on a break from work uh why are you on a break from work i'm on a break from work because i need some time to rest that's interesting i wonder if that has has to do with this temperature settings. So the temperature setting will allow you to define how creative you want to allow the responses to be. Uh, the higher the number, uh, the closer to the number one, the more creative it can be. The closer to the number zero, the less creative it can be. So let me just go ahead and set it to zero and see if it updates its response. I'm going to refresh the page. I'll go ahead and make this a bit bigger. I'll say, are you working? Well, it still said the same response. Another thing you'll want to probably do is instead of using this model text DaVinci dash 003, you'll probably want to use a chat GPT model like GPT dash 3.5 dash turbo. And for this to work, you'll want to import instead of create completion, you'll want to say open AI dot create chat completion. That lets OpenAI know you want to use one of their chat models. And for this to work, you're going to want to use something called messages. And within the messages, this is an array. This is going to replace your prompt. You put objects within this and the two values you put within here are number one role. And you usually start out a messages array with something called a uh, role system. And the second key value pair is called content. This is where you tell ChatGPT what it is. I'll say you are an assistant or you are a help 
full assistant, but you could tell this to be whatever you want. So that's the first object. The second object, this is where you can put your prompt. You could say role user. And then for the content, this is where you can put your prompt. So just put your prompt right there. And then you can go ahead and delete this. This is how to use a chat GPT model, which the responses are usually better. You do want to make sure to have stream set to true and temperature. I usually set it to 0.5. So it can be a little bit creative, but it should also try to be more accurate. Let's see how this one works. Let's refresh the page. Say, are you working? Okay. And I had to ask twice for some reason. It says, yes, I am working. How can I assist you? And let's ask a kind of complicated question. Write an app dot JS file for a React app and see how that works. Okay. And it went on to write the code for me. And so in a normal app, if you're creating a chat GPT powered chatbot, this messages will just continue on and on and on. Whenever chat GPT responds, it'll respond in another object that looks something like this. The role will say assistant, uh, and the content will be its response. You'll get that from this uh, if you console log and I'll just go ahead and just show you real fast before we end the video uh, if you console log the response I'll show you what is in the response dot data let's go ahead and delete this part again and I'll just actually say response I'm not sure if there's a data object I believe there is but there might not be let's just check uh, are you working says, yes I am so let's look inside of this response object all right so it's this really big object I do believe there is a data object. So let's try that out. Say response.data. Let's refresh the page and try again. Are you working? And let's scroll down. Okay, so actually I think it's a dot body. So normally if you're not using the openAI-edge package, if you're just using say the open AI package, there usually is a response dot data object, but it looks like with the next JS version specifically dash edge maybe using the AI package too, uh, it's in a response dot body instead. So let me just try that out and see how that works. I'll refresh the page one more time. Are you working? All right. And there it showed there is a response dot body and here is the readable stream value. And so then you could play around from there. Basically how it would work from there is whenever a uh, chat GPT response is given, you're going to want to add another role called assistant. And the response of this assistant is um, the value you want to put here, uh, the assistant response. And then the way you have a long discussion is uh, on the front end, you have to somehow save this array. And whenever Whenever the user asks a new question, just add a new user object to the conversation thread. Then whenever there's a new response from OpenAI, add that to the array and so on and so forth. And so on the back end, what's actually happening, the reason why ChatGPT can uh, remember what you've been talking about is because really every single time you uh, communicate with OpenAI, there's an array with the entire conversation being sent. Uh, and that's why sometimes you'll see things like bing.com. They have a limit on the number of times you can ask it a question in a single conversation. The reason is they're having to pay OpenAI for all of this whole conversation. So they want to start the conversation over from nothing. Um, so they're paying less for the conversation. A lot of people think it's a cool marketing thing by Bing or something like that, but really it's, it's just they don't want to spend more money on uh, OpenAI conversations. I'll put this code in the description below. I'll also add a prompt to the nextchat.ai prompt library. So if you go to nextchat.ai, log in, and then down here in the bottom right corner, you click global prompt library. You'll be able to search for it here, something like OpenAI. I'll go ahead and create that prompt and put it here. You can then use that prompt in a next chat conversation to help better understand how to use the new Vercel AI SDK. And I'll probably name it that. I'll name it Vercel AI SDK.
Let me know what you think about this new SDK package by Vercel in the comments below. What do you think the future is going to look like now that anybody can create a chat bot like OpenAI? I personally think this is officially the Google Bard killer. There's like no way Google Bard has a chance anymore. You're going to end up with like thousands of chat bot competitors that all work better than Google Bard. If you'd like me to make a video about that, also comment about that in the comments below. Like the video if you'd like to see more content like this. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.